to get out, Wilkins? No, I ain't. If it wasn't for my granddaughter, I wouldn't go at all. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? No, I wouldn't. I ran the first survey through this territory back in 66, right after the war. And I know you fellas are wrong. Maybe this will teach you a wrong. Oh. That's to show you we mean business. You'll never get away with this. That's what you think. We're riding over to put the Parnells off of their place. And you better be gone when we get back. For a siege. That's what I'm doing. Well, the two of us can't fight. We can, eh? Well, when you load them and I'll fire them, and we'll stand off a hundred of them scallywags until reinforcements arrive. I'm a ranger a riding on the hood out trail, looking for a rustler to put in jail. And when I find him, I won't be a joking. He better come with me, or my gun will be a smoking. He better come with me, or my gun will be a smoking. Yippee! <laughs> We gotta get some grub and water if we're gonna stand them off. station just as soon as I got your message, William. Say, uh, what are you doing, uh, moving? Well, not because we want to. We're being fussed out. But that's not what's worried me. It's Grandpa. The men are coming to put us out and wants to fight them. That's hopeless. Well, don't worry. If he'd rather go, uh, I'll persuade him. I'm afraid not. You see, he's expecting help from... General Johnson. General Johnson? Uh, who's he? He's been dead for a long time, Panhandle. Oh. I know. Put this on. Pretend you're a messenger from Johnson. Tell him the general wants him to leave. Oh, please, Panhandle. Oh, all right. Say, so, uh, do you think... No, he will. Well, I don't think I'll go look much like a message. Messenger from General Johnson? I'll try anything to help out. Oh, uh, message from General Johnson, sir. He wants you to join him at once. Well, but uh, I figured on putting up a fight. Oh, Grandpa, you can't disobey the General's orders. No, I suppose I can't, but I'd like to whip them scallywags first. Say, uh... Who are they? The leader is Joe Hyslop, and a first-class scoundrel if I ever saw one. Dan Tyndall and Tom Binns are helping him. There's a book here on military strategy I'd like to take with me. You were told to be out of here by 10 o'clock. It's five minutes after. Benz, read that eviction notice. You don't have to read that thing to us. I saw the ones you served on, Henry McLeod, and the Hoyts, and poor old Pinell. Suit yourself, just so you know you're getting out is legal. I don't believe it's legal. And we ranchers are going to fight it. Yip, 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 I'm on my way. Oh, yip, oh, yip, be kind. I'm a ranger riding 
out of the west, looking and a hunting for a place to rest, wishing and a hoping that'll find it soon, cause I'm tired of sleeping beneath the light of the moon. I'm tired and I'm dusty, my pony is too. Gonna get me a job where there's no riding to do. And if there's Brandon, I'll say I don't know how, but I'll know what to do when the cookie yells chow. Tussle here about this, you scallywag. Get moving. Get my wagon and make it fast. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. This is a consigned outrage. Oh, I'd have to get up in there. <laughs> you stay here, Timbo. Vince and I report to the boss. Well, Panhandle, what are you doing in that outfit? Well, I'm a scout and a good one, too. From the way those horses were running, I'd say you picked a mighty poor time for a joke. Oh, I'm not joking, Jim. I want to tell you something. Those people are the relatives I was telling you about. Well, the old man's true. Oh. Well, I'm wearing this uniform to please him. What he probably needs is a doctor. Well, what he needs most to get his ranch back. Uh, come on over here. I want you to meet him. Jim Steele, uh, shake hands with Jed Wilkins. Howdy. Hello. He's one of the toughest fighters in these parts. Oh, uh, and his granddaughter, Lizzie. How you do? Glad to meet you. Say, uh, we better head the wagon into town. No, we're going back to the line cabin at the foot of Stone Mountain. We're to meet Henry McLeod there. He's no friend of Grandpa's. Hey, uh, maybe we'd better hold up at the cabin. I don't think them varmints that kick Jed out will want that pile of rocks. Say, I thought we were going to General Johnson's. We will, we will. Just take it easy, Jed. Billy, them horses are too frisky for you. Give me them reins. Yep, 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 I'm on my way. Yep, 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 oh, yippee ki -yay. I'm a ranger of ride. My work is done. I'm heading back home in the noonday sun. Jogging back from the Hoo-Hall Trail. Cause I put another rustler in the Abilene Jail. Cause I put another rustler in the Abilene Jail. this morning. Oh, what'd they do, sell it? Nope. Well, then they still own it. Nope. <laughs> well, you're certainly a fountain of information. You didn't buy any chance to see a friend of mine around here named Panhandle Perkins, did you? Nope. Look, my friend, you're too full of nopes. If the Wilkins don't own this place anymore, who does? Flint Land Company. How'd they get it? New survey showed that Wilkins never owned it. And you made the survey? Nope. Then who did? Getting awful nosy, stranger your business. Suppose I make it mine. If you do, make this your business too.
Now, what's the name of the man who did the surveying? Sam Briscoe. You'd have saved yourself a lot of trouble if you'd told me that in the first place. Where's his office? He had got no office. He used his cattle. It's a mile outside of Laredo on the Dry Creek Road. Thanks. I'd like to look him up and ask him a few questions. If you think he'll give you the answers, you've got another thing coming. Why? He's an awful tough hombre. A lot tougher than you are. I'll give him a try anyway. I told you two I wouldn't have any more eviction notices ready until tomorrow. Just thought you'd like to know how we got along with the working place, Mr. Lowry. If you ask me, I think they're a little off wearing them uniforms. I don't care what they're wearing. Now look, I'm busy. You put them out, didn't you? We did, and left Kendall there to look after things. Well, I can look after things here without you two. Now get out. Get out! When do we get some dinero? Now listen. We have three more ranches to pick up to make a clean sweep of the valley. Then you get paid. After all we've grabbed, three more will be easy. Come on, Tom. Take it easy. Are you Mr. Briscoe? That's right. Nice reception committee you got around here. What was he shooting at you for? Oh, I don't know. I guess he didn't like the way I inquired directions. Just to make my visit official, I'm Tex Wyatt from the ranger station over at Norwalk. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Well, I'd be glad to help you, Mr. Wyatt, if I can. I understand you're running a survey through here that's causing a lot of trouble. Well, there's some of the ranchers been kicking up a fuss about losing their places, but there's nothing they can do about it. The new survey shows that the earlier boundaries were set out wrong. Well, I'm not as interested in boundary lines as I am in who killed those three ranchers over in Mesquite Flats. I don't know anything about those killings. I understand it happened while they were being put off their property. Well, I wouldn't know that. I was hoping you could help me place the blame where it belongs. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. White, but all I'm doing is running a line. Do you mind if I look over some of those new surveys you're making? No, I'll help you up. Anybody can look at them. Thanks. These look honest to me. Just as honest as the day is long, Mr. White. The uh, captain wanted me to look up a friend of his, Kendall Lowther, a lawyer. Do you know him? Why, uh, sure. Everybody knows Kendall. Where can I find him? He had his office in the main street of Laredo. You can't miss it. Well, thanks for your help, Mr. Briscoe. All right. Something we can do about Grandpa. Someday, Lillian, the doctor's gonna learn what to do for jangled nerves. The only thing I know is to humor him. He ought to come out of it sooner or later. Say, look here. This is the last letter I got from home. Ain't had a chance to read it. I've been so busy fighting. You read it to me, Lillian. Laredo, January 4th, 1862. 
Dear Jed, hope this letter finds you in the Army all right. Things are not so good for us here at home, but with shoes, $200 a pair, and beef and butter, $35 a pound. We don't get much to eat. The other night we had a sweet potato pie, and sweet it sure was... Sweet potato pie. Boy, I wish I had some. I'm getting fed up living on this parched corn. We got to do something in this fighting to hold a council of war right now. I agree with that. Van Handel, take the head of the table. Well, as Thomas Jefferson once said, uh, to be prepared for war is the most effectual means of preserving the peace. That wasn't Jefferson that said that. It was George Washington. Stop this arguing, you two. Now, before we can lay our plans, we've got to estimate the strength of the enemy. Then use a little strategy. The enemy? Yeah, strong enough to take my ranch away from me. Most of the others in the valley. Well, the land I rode through this afternoon didn't look to be so valuable. What are they after? I just found out today there's a pipeline coming through. That'll turn this valley into rich farming land. That won't do the men who pioneered this country any good. We've got to fight. Fight and fall back. That's the strategy. So back. I'm not in favor of bloodshed. I had a talk with Lyler, and he doesn't think the Flint Company has the legal right to take our land. Grandpa, I've got faith in Lyler. I'm going to put our case into his hands. Well, what's he doing for the ranchers? Nothing yet, except gathering evidence. Is his office in Laredo? Now launching the enemy and moving down right now. Oh, wait a minute, Jed. I'm for fighting, Judge. I think we ought to talk to the lawyer. Yeah, that's right, Jed. It might be smart to do a little scouting first. Well, if we're figuring on pulling out of here, we found the fight a rest before we start. Glad to see you, Lillian. How are you, Jan? These are two of my friends, Mr. Panhandle Perkins, Mr. Jim Steele, Kendall Lowther. Howdy. Glad to know you, gentlemen. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. I was just looking over some letters from friends of mine in Pine Flats. And the surveyors are running a line through there for the Flint Land Company. 
Well, that's just what we came to see you about. The Flint Line Company put us off our ranch this morning. They what? Why the low-down rascals? We want you to help us fight them. You know that I will. Tooth and nail. I'll not see my friends driven to the wall. Who is the Flint Land Company, Mr. Lowther? That's what I'm trying to find out. I think it's an Eastern Corporation. Well, I see you beat me here. Are you, Kendall? Oh, I'm in fine health. I'm afraid the doctors can't make much money off of me. Well, uh, speaking of money, I tried to raise a little for retainers for you. None of the ranchers have any. You don't need a retainer to hire me, Henry. Your friendship is more important than money. When I get your ranches back, that'll be time enough to think of compensation. Jed Wilkins and his gang are in Kennel's office, probably talking about us. Let's go in, start an argument, and break it up. But that procedure will take a long time, won't it? It probably will. The courts are slow. But let's get started. Now, Jed, you give me the details of just what happened at your place. <coughs> well, I can't seem to remember. I'm busy, gentlemen. Come back some other time. We'd rather talk to you now. Yeah, we are curious to know what's going on. Well, my client's affairs are strictly confidential. We think otherwise. One of our men was shot in the shoulder the other day, and we're trying to find out. You were the only one that attacked me. citizen. There'll be no more shooting in my office. I'll be back. But right now I'm looking after the old man. With you, Jed. Uh, he's on our side. For a minute there, I forgot he was my friend. Well, I hope you don't forget again. Let's go back and pick up Lillian. Well, if it's all the same to you, I think I'll walk. The ranchers will pay plenty for this. That was a plain case of murder. It was not. Jed shot in self-defense. That's what you say, but we think different. The best way to handle this is to take care of ourselves. That won't be necessary. The law can handle it in the proper manner. Yeah, well, we're taking the law in our own hands. Come on, Heisler. You know, I've always heard it was bad business to take the law into your own hands, my friend. Just as you say, Ranger. Who's responsible for this? Jed Wilkins. Shot him in cold blood. Jed was only protecting himself. That's a lie. Are you sure it wasn't self-defense? Of course I'm sure. We saw the shooting. It'll be easy for you to pick up Wilkins. He's dressed in a Confederate uniform. A Confederate uniform? That's right. Do you know which way he went? Why, no. He came in here with his granddaughter. Where do they live? Well, Jed did have a ranch, but thanks to the Flint Land Company, they're staying in line shack on Stone Mountain Road. Uh-huh. You two men better keep out of this. I'll have a talk with the sheriff, and then I'll ride out and pick up Wilkins. That's a good idea. Uh, McLeod, take the ranger over to the sheriff's office. Sure. Right. Thanks.
Thanks. You're the last man I expected to see here. Well, I might say the same for you. Well, I thought you went north on that timber case. Well, I did, but when I got back to the ranger station, I found out you two had gone on a furlough. Say, what's the idea of the masquerade? Well, I'm wearing this uniform for a very good reason, which you'll find out soon enough. Oh, Mr. Lillian Wilkins, Mr. Tex Wyatt. We both come from the same ranger station. Howdy, Howdy, miss. How do you do? Where is Jed Wilkins? Why? What's on your mind, Tex? He's wanted in Laredo for murder. You're not thinking of taking him in, are you? Well, if I don't, the sheriff or somebody else will. He ought to come into town and straighten things out. Grandpa's life wouldn't be worth a nickel in Laredo. That's right. Tim Land thieves have been killing men for less reason than that. What do you say, Jim? I know how you feel about the law, Tex, so I'm going to let you decide for yourself. Come on in, Jeff. Who's he? Reinforcements sent up by General Johnson. Boy, am I glad to see you. Say, sit right down. Sit right down. I want to tell you my campaign plans have got mapped out. Well, maybe we ought to ride into Laredo first. Not me. It generally said, give me liberty or give me death. Grandpa, generally didn't say that. Patrick Henry did. Well, what's the difference? Henry's one of these generals. What are the campaign plans you were going to tell us about, Jed? Well, I've got to think a bit. You know, wars are won just like we're doing now. Sitting around planning tomorrow's fight. Or tomorrow's peace, which I hope will come soon. Grandpa, there was a song you used to sing at the ranch, Old Arizona Moon. See if you can remember it, Grandpa. Old Arizona Moon is shining down from the heaven above. On one for whom my heart is pining, the little girl I love. Each night in dreams we are arriving across the dusty plain. But words of love will be confiding when she comes back again. Still shining down on our love so true. No, I can't seem to remember that one. What are you going to do, Mr. Wyatt? Well, I told the sheriff I would take care of this, and I see no reason why I shouldn't handle it in my own way. Miss Wilkins, do you know how long Briscoe has been the surveyor around here? Well, quite some time. He got the job away from Grandpa by having him declared too old. Yes, the scurvy rascal, claiming them newfangled instruments of his was more accurate than my old surveys. Have you got those original maps you made? No, they were stolen out of my house. Any idea who took them? Yes, I've got a pretty good idea. The last time I was showing them maps, there was some question as to the legal ownership. I... I know who done it. One night, a non-re spy sneaked through General Johnson's lines and stole every one of them maps. A spy? Yes, snuck in in the dead of night. What's his name, Jed? How should I know his name? I ain't ever even seen the Henri Cuss. If I had, I'd have filled his skin full of musket balls. Are you sure those maps were stolen, Jed? Sure, of course I am sure. What are you all asking me these questions for? Well, I guess I'll be riding along. Your grandfather's been a big help, Miss Wilkins. I think I'll look into the legal matter he mentioned. Take care of him. Oh, we'll see that nothing happens to him. Jim, you and I in Panhandle will ride out to look at a boundary marker. I wrote the location down from a map I saw in Briscoe's office. Oh, a scouting party, eh? Well, you might call it that. I'll be out here bright and early. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Miss Wilkins.
Uh, don't get excited. Suppose a ranger is asking a lot of questions. What can you find out? Nothing. I've covered my trail so good the best surveyor in the country can't learn how those boundaries were changed. Well, I guess I'm satisfied. Me too. Only for one thing. What's that? I want some of that money that's coming to me. Well, that's easy. You can have it all if you want it. What's that? Here, give me that. This is the original survey made by old man Wilkins. What are you keeping it for? Just in case you and your friends decide to double-cross me. That don't go with me. Me neither, then. I just pulled my gun. Well, I didn't shoot. You've got it, Frisco. No, I have it, and I'll bet you threw it behind that sofa. Lay off of that sofa! I got it! Did you get it? Of course not. You, Benz? No. According to the compass, this ought to be the boundary line. Yeah, this is it, all right. There's the surveyor's lead marker. Yeah, and the date on it is 1866. But it's a sense this rock hasn't been laying here all those years. There's no question about it. It's been moved. Well, it's a long ways to the Wilkins Ranch. They, they wouldn't have to move that very far to throw the boundary line away off. Let's ride in a circle and see if we can find the original location. Hey! hey here's a likely looking spot. There's a cairn left by the early settlers. And those are severe stakes. There's plenty of evidence here of crooked dealing. And now to hang it on the guilty ones. Too much of a start on us. Yeah. You two better stick with the Wilkins. I've got a hunch that was Briscoe, and he'll probably head for his office. on you to take you to jail. 
Pick up that sack. I want these maps. And don't try any more tricks. just picked up Briscoe and headed out in the direction of the mine shaft. We've got to get him. Briscoe might turn yellow and squeal. We'll pick up some more of the boys. Prisoner, before rendering our decision, are you willing to tell us who your leader is? I tell you, I don't know who's behind it. I pay his mail to me in cash by the Flint Land Company. Then why did you move the marker? I didn't know that rock had been moved. Oh, we think you did. And it was too big for one man to handle. Now, who helped you? Are you going to talk, Mr. Briscoe? No, I'm keeping my mouth shut. Then we conclude that you are entirely responsible for this lawlessness. We're ready to take you to jail. It'll mean prison for you. At least 20 years and maybe life, a murder. All right, on your feet. Let's go. If I tell you who it is, will you let me off easy? No, it's too late. We've already rendered our decision, so forward march. Wait a minute. I'll tell you who it is. It's Kendall Lawler that's paying the bills. He's the Flint Land Company. He's lying. Kendall Lawler's my friend. Well, I've known him for years. What I saw last night, Jed, I'm not so sure he's your friend. Are you willing to swear Lawler is the man behind all this? Sure I am. And if you don't think I'm telling the truth, take a look at his safe. I already have. Panhandle, I suggest that you and Jim keep the prisoner until I have a little talk with Mr. Lawler. All right. Get over in the corner and sit down.
You'll be wiped out if you don't surrender. Surrender? Why, you ornery coyotes, if Jeff Davis wants that, we've just begun the fight. Jeff Davis didn't say that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. An American said it, didn't he? Yeah. Well, then that's good enough for me. Get shot, I wouldn't have barked my shin. Well, it looks like we made it without anybody seeing us. Yeah, I must have gotten the ones on this side. Did you recognize any of them? Yeah, those two who were in Lowther's office. They're the ones we want. Mind your eye, Jim. I'll stick up a signal if I get one. You ain't gonna get louder. You can't prove nothing without him. Watch him, Jim. All right, down to the cabin.
may think you're a smart ranger, but you'll have a tough time proving anything on me. Oh, is that so? I uh, guess you've all seen these before. This one happens to be the corporation papers of the Flint Land Company. We've got enough evidence on you to put you behind bars for a long time. Fresco, you didn't know that Lowther here had a copy of the letter canceling your license as surveyor, did you? Now, you'll all have plenty of time in prison to think over your mistake. Oh, all right, it's my inverse. Say, hey, what am I doing in my uniform? Never mind, Grandpa. You're all right now, but you've just been through a battle. And you're some fighter. Hey, General Lee said, uh, let us have peace. <laughs> Lee didn't say that. That was Grant. <laughs> We're rangers ride, just a joggin' along, abide by the law, and don't you do wrong. Don't rustle or steal, or cheat anyone, or the buckaroos will get you, and it won't be no fun. We're rangers ride, and the heading back home, the furlough is over, no more to roam. The hombres are captured, and they're sitting in jail, while we're riding back to Texas from the hoon. Oh.